everyone. I wanted to give a quick tour of my studio space because I have two different kind of studio setups going on. I have a digital working studio over here and I have a drafting table analog art studio space right there. And I'm also going to get to what that is right behind me as well. So here we go. All right. So here is my desk setup that I use for my digital practices mostly. I have a Thunderbolt display screen right here that's connected to my MacBook Pro 15 inch retina display laptop. And then I also have my favorite new toy, which is my Cintiq Wacom Pro, which is a drawing tablet that's touch sensitive. And I made a video about that earlier, so please go check that out. Some other things I have over here are, this is where I keep all my sketchbooks. Um, I have some little sample papers over here. Um, here's kind of the paper that I do a lot for figure drawing. Um, I just really like to have easy access to all of my favorite drawing papers if some inspiration strikes. I don't have to go you know, dig around for uh, what I have. These are just some nice kind of easy to find sketchbooks that I have here. Um, and in my drawers, I kind of have three things going on here. Uh, this is where I keep sort of my miscellaneous nice pens and markers. Um, it's mostly kind of microns and different pens that I can actually use and stuff like that. In this drawer, this is like my bread and butter over here, I have all of my Prismacolor and Faber-Castell colored pencils. As you can see, I kind of have quite a lot of them. I mean, this is kind of a thick drawer here. Um, I've been collecting Prismacolors and Faber-Castell colored pencils um, since about 2010. And that's kind of mostly what I use nowadays. And down here in the lower bin, I have some, if I can get it out, I have some oil pastels. I don't use those too often. Up here, these are kind of like a new treat that I've had. These are my Carbothello chalk pastel coloring pencils. And I think they're really nice for creating skin tones. And I did some figure drawing with these recently, and I really liked how they turned out on some toned paper. And then, do you guys remember these? From like second grade? Yeah, this is still like the same one I've had since second grade, because I love them too much. Um, this is my box that I sort of keep all of my graphite and charcoal stuff in. Uh, you can see there's lots of pencils. I have like a white charcoal, charcoal pencil in here. Um, and really just anything you would need for like a figure drawing class, really. Um, I really just like to bring this so that I can, you know, do a bunch of different kind of like graphite. Like I love this graphite stick here. Um, it's kind of water soluble and stuff like that. And yeah, so this is just kind of where I go when I'm trying to do something with pencil. And behind that I have some of my recent sketchbooks. Um, a lot of them, this is not a sketchbook, a lot of them are filled, but not necessarily with drawings. These are the sketchbooks that I've been using through the last couple of years of college. A lot of them are just filled with kind of notes and different things about my thesis project and um, some logo ideas and stuff like that. So, I mean, wireframes, I love me some wireframes. All right. And I've been using that same kind of, same kind of paper for a long time, the super deluxe paper. It's, it's great for almost anything. I mean, it can draw on it, it can paint in it. Um, it really just takes everything that I throw onto it. Uh, yeah, so up here, I have some inspiration above my workspace. Uh, what I like to do up here is just kind of pin stuff that I find or from galleries that I visit. Um, here's kind of the early workings of my logo that I made from, yeah, so just some, some stuff. And of course you need to have a Pixar lamp. I mean, where would you be without a Pixar lamp? Um, or without this little drawing dude that everyone seemed to have in the 90s that I still have, which is not that accurate for drawing actually, but, but hey, I have it. So again, that's my kind of digital workspace. And over here is my drafting table.
You can see that my drafting table is quite large. I think it's about seven or eight feet long, actually. Um, and I have a little bit of more supplies over here that I like to keep over here because I use all those supplies for more analog stuff. So I have drawing kind of going right here. And I wanted to show you how the arm of this drafting table sort of works. So this is sort of designed so that it always moves in a 90 degree fashion. So it's really nice for like trying to draw um, architecture, especially it's just always gonna maintain that 90 degrees no matter you know, where we move it. Nice. So I also have a lamp that's attached up here, which is really useful. And by my chair, there is a lot of other art supplies that I use. Obviously, you can see that I use this space a lot. This is like my natural habitat. I always have a X-Acto knife here, kind of sharpening the pencils that I'm using. Um, sometimes I have my ink around, just kind of do like some quick ink washes. And in these drawers, this drawer sort of has like a lot of miscellaneous stuff. I mean, I have some like some Copic white um, ink over here. Um, I have a tub of graphite that I use. Now this drawer is where the real magic is at. So I have all these Copic markers and Prismacolor markers. So I started out with Prismacolors when I was in high school, um, when I used to be sort of into anime and manga. Um, and then once I started getting better at drawing, I started to transition to Copic markers and I like them a lot more because they layer really well on top of each other and you can create a little bit more fine gradients, which I'm more interested in. As you can see, I just have lots and lots of markers in here. Not that organized, but whatever I'm doing with that project, I'll just kind of dig through here and figure out which colors that I need. I should really get a display case. <laughs> um, and then down here is my watercolor drawer. Except for these. These are acrylics. But then the rest of them or gouache and watercolor stuff. I even have some watercolor crayons here, which I don't use a whole lot, but they're kind of fun to play with sometimes. These are all my watercolors. I really like using um, masking fluid when I'm working with watercolor. There's different kinds of it that you can use. And these are some of my favorite watercolors, these Windsor and Newton little, little portable parts. I actually got this in Germany, but I'm sure you can get them all over the U.S. as well. And you can kind of customize the little colors that you get out of there too. So, um, The other watercolor setup that I have is up here. These are my relatively new Kuretake watercolors. And I'm really liking the palette. So my other ones, of course, are tube watercolor paints, but I'm, I'm realizing that I don't really like the tube anymore. And I think I'm wasting a lot more when I'm using tube watercolors. So I've re reverted back to using these palettes. Um, and I think that these Japanese watercolors have a really nice rich texture to them that is just as good or better than the tube watercolor paints that I've been using. Okay, so over here, this is where I keep a lot of my supplies. On the bottom drawer here, I have a lot of my big format paper. So this is where I, I keep all my Stonehenge nice paper, watercolor paper that I'm going to be using. Um, most of these are probably like 32 by 40 inches. Um, just my big format paper, kind of stuff that I haven't really used yet, or kind of bigger scraps. Then on the second drawer, I have sort of medium-sized paper. This is actually my favorite kind of watercolor paper. Uh, this is a French watercolor paper. And I also have over here 
bunch of other different types of paper, some like pads of paper, medium sized pads of paper. Um, here's some animation paper. Actually, you can, you can tell because it has the little pegs on it right here that fit really well with my light board. What else do I have in here? All kinds of stuff. Some grid paper, more watercolor paper, from small watercolor pa paper, some origami, of course. Yeah, so that's some good stuff. Um, I have some more scrap paper in here. And what's nice about this is that it can actually pull out and I can more easily access. all of my materials. And so what I have up here, these are some of my oil paints that I have. This is where I keep my brushes. And underneath is where I have a lot of my acrylic paint. I don't really paint that much, but it's nice to have. in there. Great. And so I also wanted to show you what is out here. So this is actually my favorite part of my studio. This is my little, my little deck that I have and of course it's raining. So I can just come out here sometimes and hang out sort of what my studio looks like from the outside of it. You can kind of see over my yard, the neighbor's yard. I just love it. This is my favorite spot in the whole house. So, all right, let's go back in. to show you what this is. So this is my inversion table. It's something that I use to stretch out my back. And I'll just show you how that works real quick. Yeah, it doesn't sound good, does it? So you just kind of lean back. Now I'm kind of flat. So this is like really good for your back and your neck, especially if you're an artist and have to work at a desk all the time. And it's best to do it for a couple minutes at a time, but not for much longer. And it's actually quite hard to get used to, but once you do, you can kind of stay in it for a little bit longer. All right, so how do you get back up? What you do is you take the handles and then you just have to bend your knees and kind of pull yourself up. And unlock, pull this, push that, and you can step out. The reason I like the inversion table is it kind of gives me a time to relax and, make, and stretches up my spine after I've been sort of compressed and like hunched over all day kind of working on stuff. Um, I think it's like really essential for anyone who works a desk job or works kind of a job that they're, you know, hunching over and don't have like the best posture for all day because sometimes you just can't really help it if you're working on a tablet or if you're working on whatever it is if you're an artist. So um, I really highly recommend something like this. There's many different kinds of inversion tables and boots and different kinds of stuff. So I really encourage everyone that works at a desk to kind of use one of those. I hope that you enjoyed my studio tour. Um, and I think I might do a little bit more in-depth tour of the kinds of materials that I have and why I have those. Um, but for now, this is sort of like all I wanted to do. And I'm actually moving in less than three weeks to Seattle. 
And so I kind of wanted to document my own studio space before I move up there. And of course, I'll make a new video once I'm all settled in and kind of show you my new and bigger workspace. And I'm really excited about that. So I will see you in the next video and make sure that you check out my other videos that I have on my channel. So thanks. Bye. This is Kathleen Darby. See you later.